Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the video. I'm getting a lot better. My disease is slowly recovering, so that means that I can get back into regular content creation. I have been updating a bunch of lists over on Patreon, mainly Bravo Fi, and uh, currently I'm working on a Viscerai list, which I will likely be uploading this evening, which is a very spicy competitive list and is definitely worth checking out. But uh, I put a video online two days ago where I go over, went over my Fi list, and in the meantime, the Stubby Hammerers got banned. And a lot of people are kind of calling a lot of doom and gloom like, Oh my god, Fi is not good anymore because the Hammerer is gone. Well, I think for the most part, like, Fi has never really been an s -tier deck. There was a huge RNG component tied to it in the first place. And I feel most of the people that got turn 0 killed by Fi are probably other Fi players that weren't able to block those big turns coming in. Personally, I feel in contrast to things like Channel Mount or Rogue, or maybe even Modratite, the Stubby Hammers were on a equal power level, especially since we needed a bunch of other cards to make them work efficiently, mainly the Belittle and the Art of War engine. So RNG-wise, I feel they didn't really do all that much, but uh, with them gone, it's fine, it's perfectly fine, because now we can play the Tiger Stripe Shuko without feeling bad that we're missing out on some damage. And if you don't have this tiger tri the Tiger Stripe Shuko, try saying that 10 times, my hell. But um, yeah, so if you don't have the Tiger Stripe Shuko, you can always run a Heat Wave or something like that. Because uh, that is still a plus 3 damage if you get your 3 Phoenix Flames on the field. Which can be quite nice, especially if you uh, try to dance around with some Inflames and stuff like that. So what did I change in the list? Well, I went back to more of a value-centric list now. I still have my belittle engine like I did before. A bunch of this is in the sideboard. I will put uh, the full deck list down in the description so you can all check that out. I'm still making some changes here and there because I do want to make sure that this deck is as competitive as it can be. And then with the Shuko, we have a very nice interaction now because with something, for example, if you have a rising resentment in the hand, you have a blue in the hand and uh, a nice finisher like a lava burst, what you can do now is you can play the rising resentment uh, pitch the blue in order to swing with your weapon for three. You will have one resource floating. You can use that to bring a Phoenix Flame back from the graveyard to play that as well. And then you can finish off the chain with something like a Lava Burst or a Salt of Wounds. Because of the Shuko, because this is the, the second attack with uh, two or less base power, this one will get plus one, which means that Lava Burst suddenly becomes a six attack. So overall, in a game that lasts like four or five turns, the Shuko is kind of getting back the value that uh, Stubby Hammers were giving us in the first place. And if you don't have a finisher like that, you can always play like a additional flame or maybe finish the chain with something like a yellow Rising Resentment, which I have as a one-off in this deck at the moment. I went ahead, I took out the tomes of the, what the whatever they're called, the Draconic Tomes, whatever the name is. I feel they are a little bit too janky for a non-OTK build. I did keep the three copies of Art of War in here. I did end up taking out the single copy of Rise Up in favor of a Take the Tempo. I'm still experimenting if adding some extra copies of Take the Tempo is worth it instead of Phoenix Form because Phoenix Form is a bit of a trap. I still like it. I have, a, have had a lot of uh, very easy wins with Phoenix Form and I really like the... Um, the, the spiciness behind uh, getting three Phoenix Flames on the field and then playing your Phoenix Form after that. But as you can see, since I did remove my End Flames, getting off a proper Phoenix Form turn is a little bit harder than it used to be. And uh, because that I might be cutting that in favor of some other nice finishers. Two copies of all that you got. Flying Kick, I kept it. Uh, even if I am going to take out Art of War eventually, if I take it out, it depends on the testing I'm going through. But uh, I kind of like Flying Kick, yeah? and the main reason why I like it is because if you're going with a belittle turn and you already have a blue in hand, and sometimes fetching a blue mana wizard felt a little bit uh, bad in a way, but thanks to the Flying Kick we have like an additional blue outlet which uh, can double up as a 5 attack, which is really nice, and this is also a target that you can reveal with your belittle in order to fetch the mana wisdom straight from the deck. So I do like the Flying Kicks quite a bit. And uh, we have our massive combo payoff still in the form of Spreading Flames. 
Uh, some people are playing Spreading Flames wrong though, like for whatever reason people are using this like a pseudo art of war where they play this and then they start giving plus one to every single attack. To those of you, you need to read this properly. It says draconic attacks you control are plus one while their base power is less than the number of draconic chain links you control. So if you, for example, attacking with a rising resentment as your second draconic chain link, the, the two attack one, the yellow one, it does not gain that plus one. If you attack in as your third draconic chain link, it does get that plus one. So please stop giving plus one to every single attack. It does not work that way. So in terms of the sidebot, I keep the run renegades in the sidebot as well as what else do I keep in the sidebot? The two yellow belittles. And I have one more thing. I think it's to take the tempo as my as my other thing to keep in the sidebot. And I got a bit of a at six type of sideboarding deal. Depending on the matchup, if you're up against a prison, for example, you want to bring in your task with your raised faces. Uh, these, of course, are also in the side, but if you're up against an aggro deck like Runeblade that uses Reset the Torn, you want to bring in your that all you got with your Take the Tempo and three other things, probably your Run Renegades and stuff like that, or Race Phase if you're up against a Briar. So we have a bunch of sideboard flexibility. For the full sideboard guide, you can always check out my Patreon and I will definitely answer questions there as well if you are not sure what to bring and how to play this deck. But the deck is strong, I've been practicing it most of yesterday. Like I started in the early morning to try and optimizing it without the stubbies and for the most part the deck kind of stays the same. It's uh, not as impactful as the stubby hammer turns that we used there where we can just spit out like 30 damage on a good turn. But we are still consistently pushing like 15 to 20 damage a turn which is rather nice and which is probably where this deck should be at so I think it's still very viable you can definitely raise your opponents down to the finish line if you're up against a Viserai or a Briar player it kind of depends if the Briar player puts the Channel Mountain Rogue on the field very early then it's probably going to be an odd to loss same with uh, Viserai going into a big moderate tide turn with a bunch of rune chance on the field on turn one then you're kind of going to lose the tempo because they're going to be so far ahead of you in terms of damage that it's relatively difficult to catch up. But against most of the other heroes out there, it's uh, kind of still an easy... Well, I don't want to say easy. It's a, it's a fair matchup, let's put it like that. Against Prism, you have a relatively good time because uh, they cannot really stop all the damage coming in. Against Dromai as well, you can keep clearing the dragons off the board. Unless, you, of course, you can just go full aggro and try and zerk them down as soon as possible. We have a lot of nice sideboard tags in terms of equipment that helps us uh, match up nicely against things like Iceland or Encana because we can very easily bring a single Kodachi with a Lantern, a Nolrin Rope and a Tide Slippers. I've even been thinking to just cut the Snapdragon Scales out of the deck completely. The reason being is that uh, Snapdragon Scales is one of those relics that is in the deck from the days that I had a bunch of like end of chain finishes like a breaking point and take the temper the deck but since I only have a single copy of take the tempo now I feel maybe the type flippers are kind of doing what the snapdragon scalers would be doing in the first place of course having the snap piece is still nice if you for example drawn to let's say you draw to three blaze headlongs you cannot give them go again because you don't have another red card in hand you can very easily play one crack the snap piece and then play the second and third one so there is some benefit to having the snapdragon skills but it just comes up so rarely that I I'm kind of wondering to just cut it and uh, add some other sideboard tech against things like Bravo, for example, because having some unmovables in the deck would also be rather good. We still run the Blossom of Spring. Um, now that we don't have the OTK build, I'm a bit going back and forth between Fiendal Spring Tuning and Blossom of Spring. But for now, I will play Blossom of Spring because for the most part, you don't really reach turn 6 anyways, and having that resource on demand is kind of nice. Plus, I have a call fall, which uh, always looks very nice on the field. So, I mean, that can be a valid reason, right? Just a uh, rule of cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because of that, I am kind of considering to cut the spring tunic out of the deck completely. I maybe have like an additional sideboard slot available. Like these two gone would already mean that we can add like two rather movables, which could be very nice against the Bravo deck. So feel free to experiment around with that. Like I might update it on the Patreon at some point. And uh, if I do, you will probably, and you're not a patron, you probably see the updated video coming onto the channel sometime in the next two or three weeks. 
But uh, yeah, Fi is still very viable, still very strong, has a lot of good matchups against the current meta game. A little bit less so against Bry, I have to say. I think against Bry is maybe like a 40% matchup. Definitely beatable, but it's uh, a little bit not in our favor. Against First Rai, I would say it's about 50-50, and uh, it's still a very solid deck. I'm super happy with LSS for banning the Stubby Hammers, because let's be honest, it created some very very toxic play environments and uh, I wasn't really happy with everybody suddenly jumping onto the fight deck as well so just simply because they the deck was so cheap to build with the most of the bouncing legs and the spring blossom or spring so now we have more of the fight diehards those of you that are watching this video right now are probably fight main so we got our deck back. Nobody's gonna steal our deck for quite some time because the room plates are slightly better and that's probably what the people are gonna play going forward. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you want me to do a specific kind of uh, alteration to this deck, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you're a patron, of course, you have priority. I always prioritize my patrons when I put out decks and stuff like that. We're going to be doing a tier list soon where I go over some very nice data that I am getting from Flesh and Blood Online, the new uh, online game that has been circulating. So keep an eye out for that. They are helping me to get a bunch of data to share with all of you people, which is very nice. And uh, other than that, thank you for watching again, and I will see you all very, very soon with the next, well, maybe even with the next five video. I really love this deck. Take care.